Now in Gemstone, we have transactional semantics. Your view is isolated with repeatable reads. So changes may, that you make before you commit are not visible outside your session. They're visible to you, but not to others. Changes that have been made in other sessions since you started are not visible to you. So once you have a particular view, your view stays consistent. You have a snapshot of the database at the moment when you last did an abort or commit. So other people can modify things. Your queries give you back the state of the world that existed at the time that you got your snapshot of the database. If you do an abort, all your changes are lost, no longer visible to you or to anyone else, and you get a new view of the database as from its most recent state. Now, concurrency. There's challenges with concurrency. Any multi-user, multi-VM uh, system will have these challenges, and there's two broad approaches optimistic concurrency and pessimistic. With optimistic concurrency, you wait until a commit is attempted and look for conflicts. When a commit is requested, the system checks to see if any objects modified in the current session have been modified by another session after you start it. So if someone has modified an object and then you try to commit a change to the object, if there's any right, right conflicts, then your commit will fail. And your view will remain as it was before the commit, and you need to abort, get a fresh view, and then it's application dependent on do you retry or do you ask the user? Tell the user you can't save those changes, someone else did, so you need to look at things and re decide what to do. Pessimistic concurrency, at any time, any session may request a write lock on any object. Once you've obtained the write lock, then no other session can modify that object, can commit a change to the object that you have locked. Now, to make sure you have a fresh view, you generally want to commit or abort after you obtain the lock to make sure that your view is the most recent of that object. And now you can proceed to make changes confident that your changes will not produce a conflict since no one else can make changes after you obtain the lock. There's APIs in the system to find out who owns the lock. So if you want to lock something and fail, you can find out who has it. Now there are times when it's acceptable to have multiple changes to the same object. For example, if you have a set or a bag, if multiple P sessions are adding separate objects to a collection, to a set, where order, by definition for a set, order is not important, then having multiple sessions add should be acceptable. Gemstone has what's called reduced conflict that are safe in, if you use them in well-defined ways. An RC identity bag. Multiple sessions can add objects to an RC identity bag. If they add the same object, then it will be added twice. It's the nature of bags, can hold multiple references to the same object. A key value dictionary. Two different sessions can add keys, modify the value of different keys, of the dictionary at different keys. You would get a conflict if two sessions attempted to modify the same key, but as long as they're on separate keys, then it should be acceptable to have parallel modifications. We have something called an RCQ, where multiple sessions can add objects to the queue, and then one session can take items out of the queue, and they'll come off in order. RC counter, 
multiple sessions can increase or decrease a counter. And while the current value might not reflect all the changes, um, in the end, once everybody's committed, logged out, the counter will have the correct value in it or the updated value that's consistent from all the modifications that have been made. Gemstone provides the capability of interfacing to external systems. You can write a user action in C as a library and load it into Gemstone. When you invoke a function on the user action from Smalltalk, you can pass it objects and then it can interact. There's an add-on product in Gemstone called Gem Connect that provides both a Smalltalk library and a C library that interfaces to an Oracle database, giving you those capabilities. In version three of the 64-bit product, which should come out next year, we have a Smalltalk, pure Smalltalk API to C libraries, which will make that even easier. User authentication, what sort of security does Gemstone provide? Well, you need a valid ID and password recognized by the database to connect. There's rules on when the password needs to be modified, how many characters it needs to have, how many can be repeating, how many can be consecutive, limits on concurrent logins, you can also configure the system to require a host user ID and password in addition to the database. But the default is to just run all the VMs under one um, gemstone session, user ID. After authentication comes authorization. What is a particular user allowed to do once they're connected? Well, you need to have certain privileges to even change your own password. You might not give a user that privilege if it's a semi-public account or something, for example, in a classroom setting. You need to have privilege to change someone else's password. You need to have privilege to compile Smalltalk code. So you might build an application where the developers have permission to change the code, compile code, and users log in and can run the code but not modify it. Performing backups, certain user or system administrative, database administration function, garbage collection. Accessing the file system is a privileged operation that can be allowed or denied to, on a user by user basis. Loading, calling a user action, and executing a shell command on the server, something that very handy to be able to do, but you might not want uh, certain users doing it. So those are examples, there's others, but those are examples of authorizations that uh, a recognized user can be allowed or denied. And then the deepest level of security is object access security. So each user can be associated with one or more groups. So you can define groups and put, assign users to the groups. Each object can be associated with a security policy. And we have 15 bits reserved for security policy. Security policy identifies an owner for an object, groups that are permitted for that object, and then permissions for the owner. Does the owner have read and or write permission to the objects in this policy? Do groups have read and or write permission to objects with this policy? And does the world have read and or write access to objects with this policy? So very high degree of granularity on security and we have customers in the financial industry who take this sort of thing very seriously. 